This is Mario Andretti, and you are listening to Below the Yellow Line. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Below the Yellow Line podcast. Very excited to have another great guest on the show today, Michelle Lackey Maynard, the general manager of the Alaska Raceway Park. You don't think Alaska immediately when you think racing, but you guys are trying to change that. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, We've had a lot of general managers and and short track owners on the past uh, few weeks trying to help out as many short tracks as we can. Uh, You guys are part of NASCAR Home Tracks and the the Advanced Auto Parts uh, Weekly Series, which is also trying to accomplish uh, that goal. Um, But how did you individually kind of get into the role of, of being the general manager of a racetrack? How did you come into your profession? Well, um, Alaska Raceway Park started originally as a drag strip, and that's how our family got involved with it. My uh, my older brother started racing. We got into racing, um, ended up, there was a group of racers that purchased the track from um, the original owners, and then my parents kind of took over from there. And so um, ever since then, I've been involved with um, the management and behind the scenes and, and racing and doing some things there. Um, in 2016, we opened the NASCAR track you see behind me. It's a brand new facility that we, we just built. And when when Dad put that together, he's like, okay, you know, I, I built the track, so here you go, run it. And um, I didn't really, I didn't know anything about oval track racing. So I'm, I'm learning a lot as I go. And then in 2020, um, I took over ownership from my parents. And so um, now, now I'm in charge of all the things. Running the family business, and uh, just like the Petty family back in the day, it's it's an unorthodox family business. It's not a gas station, a general store, but it's something that obviously you guys uh, have a passion for um, and and love. But I have to ask, since Alaska isn't, you know, maybe not the most notable state. Uh, when I think Alaska, I think of it as the state that ranch dressing was invented in. And to be honest, no disrespect, not much else. Um, but are there any logistical challenges in racing in Alaska with it not necessarily being part of the lower 48 that not many people know about? There's, there's a ton. It's funny you ask that because I, I was joking around this summer and I was like, who would have thought I would have, have to have a degree in logistics in order to run a racetrack? <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the hurdles that, that I have every year is coordinating getting our tires here. Um, we were an NX track, we're a NASCAR track, and so uh, we run the American Racer tires, and then we run the Hoosier tires from N- from NX. And so, you know, this year I was coordinating getting those tires shipped from North Carolina over to um, South Sound Speedway in Washington, which is where I get my American Racer tires from, and then coordinating getting all of that shipped up here in one Connex together, and hopefully getting them here before the season started. This year it worked out pretty okay, but it's 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 a lot. There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, Any time that we order fuel or equipment or anything like that, it's it's you know how how am I going to get that one thing from wherever it is all the way up here? And what you know the most economically po- feasible way possible, you know. And so so that's just one thing uh, for the racers. Um, you know, if, if they run into the wall, there aren't, you know, parts dealers anywhere nearby. So you, you either have to get that stuff overnighted or expressed up here or, um, you know, borrow something from one of the other racers. Um, we do have an NX dealer in the state who carries, you know, a supply of stuff, but, you know, it's not not always the part that you need to him to have and so there's there's a lot of logistics trying to get everything up here and then of course if we've got you know drivers coming up from other places um you know coordinating airfare and hotel and and travel and getting cars through canada like during covid that was an issue now now it's not such a big deal but um, there's there's just a lot that goes into it that you don't think of when you're in north carolina and you can drive 50 miles in any direction and hit a racetrack or two well i'm glad glad i don't have have your job job because (laughs) it seems very very stressful stressful. Uh, but obviously obviously you've done all right so far what is your relationship like with those drivers and, and with the fans as well? Because um, I'd imagine, you know, the places where some things are sparse is usually where I feel like 
the most devoted fans are. So, you know, obviously you have hardcore racing fans in North Carolina and Indiana, but you go somewhere like Alaska, and I figure the fans are maybe more devoted, more diehard than other places. So what is your relationship like with the drivers and the fans being the owner of the Speedway? We... Um we have a pretty good relationship with with most everybody here. Um, I, I like to refer to it as our um, ARP track family because we are, I mean, we're, we're connected to the rest of the U.S., but we're pretty much an island. And so all we have up here is each other, you know, and, and I understand the relationships between um, the track and, and what I call our refs, our racers, our employees, our fans, and our sponsors. Those are... Um, the user groups that that I have to consider when I'm making decisions um, and and we can't work independently of, of each other you know um, the racers have got to have fans in the seats watching them so that I can continue to to get the income coming in that we need and the sponsors need to see the fans and the racers you know it all it all works together we're all kind of tied in together and so I try really hard to um, be transparent with everybody and kind of let them know where we're all at because it, it is this little like I don't know ecosystem that we have and and, and we it, it's a balance you know we all have to work together in order to make sure that that we're getting the part that we love you know we're providing entertainment for the fans and a place for the racers to race you know and they're helping you know, bring in the income that is paying for all of this sort of stuff, you know, like it, we all work together. And um, I, I really, really try to get that out to everybody. And, and that's what I say is the, the best part about our racetrack. And also the worst part is the fact that we are, um, we are so close knit. And so, you know, you have, have people leave or, you know, people pass away and stuff. And it really, affects us a whole lot because we are so close it's not you know I, I sometimes think it would be better to be at a racetrack where you know the racers were more transient and the fans were more transient you didn't have these close interpersonal relationships because it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt so much but um, it's also one of the things that that brings us the greatest joy Absolutely. And, you know, it, it makes it every makes moment every sweeter, moment I guess, sweeter. you know, knowing the fans coming through your gates and the drivers um, out there competing so those fans can come to the track. And, and it does all work together. You know, racing is a sport that's pretty complicated. It's not necessarily a cut and dry thing where, OK, one thing happens. This other thing happens. That's it. It's a multitude of logistical nightmares, basically, that all miraculously happen each and every weekend. So um, the fact that, you know, like you and, and being in Alaska, I feel like you guys are a little bit uh, more of a, uh, I don't know, detriment, I guess, to, to the logistics of it. But obviously you guys are, uh, are making it work. Um, has there been a favorite moment for you so far? I know there's probably a lot to pick from, but has there been one moment that really stands out? <sighs> Holy cow, there's so many moments. Um, there's, I mean, we've had, we've had a, a lot of very cool guest racers that have come up and, and been here. Um, there's, you know, I mean, Right now, off the top of my head, the, the thing that's coming to mind is just opening day um, because it was that that it was the very first oval track race that I've ever been to was opening day at my track. And, um, you know, we we planned and we did a lot of work and we got all the employees together and, you know, everybody was very, very nervous about their role and how it was all going to turn out and the racers you know had placed a lot of faith in us that we were going to get this track built and it happened on time and um you know I remember being up in the tower and just wonder you know the gates open up and I'm like you know are we even gonna is anybody even gonna be here and and people started coming in and you know it it all just started started happening and and that that was so many years in the planning and in the works to try to get that together and and it and it worked you know people showed up and the racers were there and everybody you know we were all able to do the parts that that we 
were conditioned to do or whatever. And um, it, it was just really, really neat to be able to have that happen. And then, uh, you know, this we just completed our eighth season. So I now kind of feel a little more relaxed going into race day because I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And all of, you know, we've got a really great staff that, you know, everybody kind of knows their role and, and we're all kind of getting like a well-oiled machine now. And so it's, it's uh, definitely taken a little bit of that pressure off, but the first day and just, you know, having people show up and be part of it was just like beyond anything. You talk about talk that about opening that day, you know, day, being so many years so in the making, but when you think about the future of this track, where do you want it to be? Where do you see it being in, you know, 5, 10, 20 years down the line? Um, that's a really good question. I have, for, for the facility, we've got a lot of plans. I mean, I definitely want to be, be here. We want to continue to grow and continue to be, um, the track family that, that we've created. Um, we want more people to be able to come up and visit. We have people that stop by um, all, all the time, like multiple times during the week from out of state and they're here for some other reason but they heard about the track and they want to stop in and see it and you know get their pictures taken with the mountain because like the mountain where there <laughs> is um, it's super amazing in the pictures but when you see it in real life it just is beyond anything that you've ever seen before and so people stop in all the time and they want to see it and I want to get the track to where it operates um, without me that's you know not that I don't want to be there but I want to make sure that in the event that I I am somewhere or I'm sick or you know whatever life gets in the way right like I want to make sure that that my employees are empowered enough to run the facility without me um, being there on race day and to make everything run as smoothly as possible. Um, I want to continue to grow and continue to um, make motorsports um, a thing in Alaska. I mean, it, it already is a thing, but I really feel the more that we are growing in on both sides of the track, um, the more motorsports in general is growing, so I want to be a bigger player in that. Um, but I also want to, like, and this this may be super lofty goals, but I want to make sure that that we're advocating for motorsports across the country. That it's not, you know, there there are tracks that are going away, and I want to make sure that we can do what we we can do, even if it's just a little bit. But if there's something that we can do to help. Um, continue making motorsports um, grow and continue to be for generations to come. I want to be part of that. Well, I think you're doing a great job of it so far. So far. Um, my, last my last question is, question is where, can where, can where can people find you on the web? Where can people find you on socials? And for all the people all the that, people that, that uh, now want to go to the Alaska Raceway Park, Park, because you should, get a plane get ticket, a plane <laughs> ticket uh, <laughs> drive your car <laughs> there <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow, figure out a way to get there, go to a race. Um, but where can everybody find you physically uh, and on the web? Well, on the web, we're at raceak.com. Uh, we're also very active on Facebook and Instagram, so follow us on both those medias. Um, I am on uh, Instagram and Facebook as Lady Track Boss, um, and we're on LinkedIn for uh, both myself and the company. For the racetrack, we are located in Palmer, which is about 45 minutes north of Anchorage. Yeah, so so yeah, you can find us everywhere um, on all the things. And then, yeah, I'd love to have anybody come up. There's a ton of Airbnbs and stuff in the neighborhood and a, a bunch of really cool things to do in the valley where the track is located. So we'd love to have visitors anytime. Absolutely. Get to the track, visit them on the web, visit them on social media, just interact. And, and this, you know, goes for, for this track, but every single short track in the country, get out there, you know, watch the races, listen to the races, just help them out in some way. Because I say this with every one of these interviews with short track personnel, that short tracks are a rung that's often overlooked, but a rung that is so important on the ladder of motorsports uh, in this country. Um, 
thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, we wish you and, and your team uh, there at ARP uh, the best of luck. Uh, this, uh, well, I guess you all just finished up this season, but uh, also uh, for the seasons to come. Yep, sounds great. And if you're at PRI in December or the RPM conference in Reno in November, um, I will be at both of those things. And I would love talking with any short track operators or any fans or anything like that at either one of those. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. you bet. Thanks. Bye. Bye.